dear vice rector, dear professors, dear colleagues. I would like to present uh, my PhD thesis, which is the investigation of the link between different diseases from the aspect of the oral microbiome and the progress I have already made. Uh, my name is Zuzanna Domokos. I am a clinical doctor and a PhD student at the Department of Community Dentistry. My vision is to develop an interdisciplinary knowledge by investigating the association between dental and systematic diseases and improve the treatment by involving both dentists and medical doctors. My mission is to incorporate, incorporate multidisciplinary attitude into clinical practice based on a comprehensive knowledge. In order uh, to fulfill my mission, my specific goals are to investigate an association between dental and systematic diseases and to identify a yet unknown risk population in dentistry through a meta-analysis. And in the future, I would also like to carry out a cohort analysis in this topic. Uh, my other uh, vision uh, is to contribute in finding the best surgical treatment for our patients in periodontology. Uh, the title of our first meta-analysis is the investigation of the association between different multifactorial diseases, periodontal disease and inflammatory bowel diseases. According to the Global Burden of Disease Study, severe periodontal disease was the 11th most prevalent condition in the world. It is one of the major causes for tooth loss, thus reducing the quality of life. It is already known, according to several studies, that periodontitis was associated with several systematic diseases and health complications, like adverse pregnancy outcomes, cardiovascular diseases, and neurological disorders. But uh, more recent studies have called attention to a yet unknown association that periodontitis might be associated also with inflammatory bowel diseases. Uh, one study, which we also use as a key ar article for our meta-analysis, showed that IBD patients had more sites with clinical attachment loss of at least 4 millimeters, but also 5 millimeters. And then another study showed that IBD was associated with increased risk of periodontitis. As both diseases are multifactorial, investigating the association between them could improve the interdisciplinary knowledge about these diseases. There might be a difference in the range of the association in the different population with different characteristics, and the cause of this difference might be behavioral differences or coexistence of some other risk factors. Identifying these common risk factors could widen our knowledge and also improve the treatment of these diseases. IBD patients might be a risk population in dentistry and might be more susceptible to periodontitis, but both uh, people suffering from chronic periodontitis might be a risk population for IBD. So we believe that both gastroenterologists and dentists should be aware of this fact and emphasize the prevention in their cases even more than in the healthy population. So the aim of our study is to investigate the association between periodontitis and IBD from both directions and identify a possible risk population and also common risk factors. Uh, the clinical question of the study is that is there an association between periodontitis and IBD? And as I have said, we would like to investigate it from both directions. That's why we would apply two PICOs, which you can see on the slide. The clinical implication of this study is to identify a risk population and improve the multidisciplinary treatment. You can see the systematic search I made on three databases. Uh, the search was made in October, and you can also read the search key which I used. Uh, you, here you can see the flowchart of my selection. After the selection, uh, I got 13 eligible articles, and right now I am doing the data extraction according to the suggestions of the statistician. The title of our second meta-analysis is the comparison of tunnel technique and coronary advanced flap in the treatment of gingival recessions. Gingival recession is defined as the apical displacement of the gingival margin, resulting from the destructive effect of plaque accumulation, trauma from toothbrushing, or also both. Gingival recession is associated with thermal and tactile sensitivity, aesthetic complaints, and also tendency toward root caries. It has been established that several surgical techniques could be equally effective in reconstructing the lost gingival tissue, given that there is no interdental attachment loss. The goal of every surgical uh, gingival recession technique uh, is to provide a minimal probing depth after healing, provide a good aesthetic for the patient, and reduce the pains I, I have mentioned. 
as I have said, uh, having a gingival recession uh, causes uh, real suffering for our patients, but also the surgeries are very demanding. So finding the best surgical technique with the best results and the best healing period for our patients is essential. So the aim of this study is to compare the short-term and the long-term results of surgeries with tunnel technique and coronary advanced lab in the treatment of gingival recessions. On this slide, you can see a picture of both techniques which we will compare. On the left side, you can see a picture of the tunnel technique uh, the unique characteristic of this surgery that the interdental papillae are left intact and as you can see in the picture C and D, into the tunnel, a connective tissue graft is placed. In the other case, uh, you can see a picture of the coronary advanced flap, which means the coronal shift of the marginal tissues to the exposed roof surface. As you can see, there are different results according to different studies uh, when measuring different clinical parameters. Uh, the reason for this heterogeneity uh, could be that there are several modifications of these techniques and uh, each technique has its own benefits and in every clinical case uh, a different surgical procedure could be uh, better. The clinical question of our meta-analysis is that is there a difference between the short-term and long-term results using tunnel technique or coronary advanced lab in the treatment of gingival recessions? You can also read the PICO framework, which we use for our intervention and meta-analysis. The clinical implication of this study is to, is to help the surgeons choose the best surgical technique in each clinical case, because every clinical case is different and every patient are different. I would like to finish my presentation with this quote, a ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what the ships are built for. Thank you for your attention. Congratulations, I'd like to uh, make some remarks to the second topic. So first of all, I think we have to specify the surgical technique because tunnel technique is a universal term. So you can talk about subepithelial tunneling technique, modified coronal advanced tunneling technique. Actually, the reference what you included is not uh, the actual surgical technique what was shown in, in the pictures. So that's my first remark. So I think you will have to uh, specify a search for the modified coronal advanced technique. Secondly, this is not the coronal advanced flap, but the modified coronal advanced flap, and I think also another Zucchelli article would be more appropriate. And also I would like to uh, suggest that you only uh, um, uh, look for uh, outcomes from middle class one and two recessions, because middle class three is a completely different identity, com completely different diagnosis, with much worse prognosis in terms of fruit coverage. So I think you will have to specify your search for middle class one and two, and then uh, close down a bit the available techniques for, for the modified coronary advanced tunnel and the modified coronary advanced flap. So that would be probably more indicative of the, uh, of the efficacy of these techniques. Thank you for your comment. Uh, maybe we are planning to do, to do some subgroup analysis according to this, uh, but maybe we will modify uh, the PICO which uh, you suggested. So the Thank problem you. is that in MILA class 1 and 2, you have a good chance for a complete root coverage, and yes. on average you can achieve about 90%. In MILA class 3, you cannot achieve complete coverage, only 60 to 70% on average. So com comparing apples with oranges is, is probably not, not the good way to go. Uh, yes, I think uh, subgroup analysis uh, would be necessary for this. Uh, problem. I want to ask a question for project one. And so is there any existing meta-analysis? So if, if there is only, if there is, what is the difference between these meta-analysis? Uh, yes, there is an existing meta-analysis, uh, but it was published uh, years ago and there are newer uh, studies. So this is a really new, new novel finding, so I think it is necessary to do a new meta-analysis in this topic. I'm a bit puzzled here because uh, I, I entirely agree with your last comment that uh, we should really personalize therapy and choose the best, but you are comparing two <coughs> different um, interventions and in your meta-analysis you are trying to answer which is better than the other and this is a universal decision but the, but uh, your last in your last sentence the way I understood it uh, there is an option for the physicians to decide which is best for the patient and your meta-analysis will it answer that uh, I think it will uh, we will have to see uh, which, which was the before the treatment, uh, so it was it Miller one, two, three. So we, we have also we also need to compare the cases just before the treatment. Yes, yes, some subgroup analysis. So I think this would answer this way to 
my question. Quick comment or question to your first project. Are you planning to do subgroup analysis for the two distinct types of IBD like colitis, ulcerative colitis and, uh, and Crohn's disease? Because Crohn's disease can affect the whole of the alimentary tract. In fact, I'm a gastroenterologist. That's when I have to look into the mouth of a patient if it presents with Crohn's disease to identify if there's any disease within the oral cavity. Uh, so that's, that's the question. Are you planning a subgroup analysis? And the other question is a cl clinical question. Do you see a different kind of uh, periodontal disease in, in, in Crohn's than in, in, in UC? That's the other question. Thank you for your questions. For the first question, yes, we definitely want to do subgroup analysis, and I already see that we will have enough data for doing uh, this kind of subgroup analysis. And for your second question, uh, it's not the clinical form that is different, but these patients uh, are more susceptible uh, to developing periodontitis. So they, they are a risk population for developing periodontitis.